Are you having a hard time playing your comp? Do you feel under pressure during every arena game you play? Look no further, we have a solution for you. Today, we will be looking at some of the easiest comps to play in Shadowlands 9.0. We will go over some basics for each of these comps and tell you what you should be playing based on your spec. First, let's quickly go over some criteria for what makes a comp easy for a spec. First and foremost, the comp should at least be good. Any mid-tier or low-tier comp will not be easy, since it will pretty much always struggle into higher-tier lineups. Next, the comp should have a really basic win condition. If the comp just needs to stun the kill target and pop CDs every minute, it's probably an easy comp. If the comp requires incredibly precise cross CC to barely scrape together kills, it probably isn't that easy. Basically, if your cat could step on the keyboard and score kills, it's easy. If you need an Excel sheet to crunch data to land kills, it's probably not that easy. Finally, if the comp has a bunch of support options, either with spammable CC, powerful off healing, and lots of utility, it is probably an easy comp to play just because of how forgiving these support options are. With that in mind, let's jump into the easiest comps for every spec. There are two comps that are both strong and relatively easy for Death Knights. The first is Windwalker DK Holy Paladin. Commonly called Walking Dead Cleave because it can simply walk up to you and kill you, this comp has one of the strongest kill setups in the game, with Death Grip being used to blinding sleep, chill streak, and leg sweep multiple enemy targets with massive AoE damage. Both DKs and Monks deal some of the highest damage in the game, and most of the game is spent trying to overwhelm the enemy team with raw damage. DKs have an important role in this comp, which is to support their team with an anti-magic zone to counter enemy setups. Outside of this, the wide array of defensive cooldowns from the the Holy Paladin is usually enough to consistently deflect enemy attacks. Another relatively easy comp for DKs is Resto Shaman TSG. Much like the melee cleaves mentioned before, this comp's win condition is just pure damage. It doesn't have any complicated setups, but relies on DK damage combined with Mortal Strike to secure kills. Just like Windwalker DK, TSG sets up most of its win conditions with Death Grip to stun multiple targets and deal AoE damage. Although it doesn't have the same off healing as a Ret Paladin or Enhancement Shamans, the majority of its defense comes from the Warrior once again with Intervene, War Banner, and Rallying Cry to support their team. Cleaving is believing, and next on our list as the easiest comp for a few specs is Ret slash Warrior. It should come as no surprise that this meta-defining comp is not only one of the strongest available comps in the game, but also one of the easiest to play. This comp has a pretty simple win condition by just overwhelming the enemy team with damage. Its kill setup is rather straightforward, and without any spammable casted CC, it usually looks for kill windows during short stuns on DPS and healers. The combination of Sharpened Blade and Mortal Strike during Avenging Wrath and Divine toll is enough to overwhelm the enemy team with damage alone. Defensively, this comp has a huge number of support options, with the Ret offering Blessing of Protection, Blessing of Sanctuary, and strong off healing to their partners, and the Warrior having Intervene, War Banner, and Rallying Cry to support their team. The combination of this strong defensive toolkit with the relatively simple win condition makes this comp one of the best and easiest comps for Ret Paladins, Resto Shamans, and Disc Priests. So if you're looking for a quick boost in rating, definitely play this comp. Next, we have Turbo Cleave, which is very similar to Ret Warrior, but with less WOG and more Zug Zug. Its win condition is really straightforward. It revolves primarily around Shaman's offensive cooldowns with Bloodlust and Doom Winds by using Bloodlust on the Warrior for a huge spike in damage. Once again, the combination of these cooldowns with a Mortal Strike effect just overwhelmed the enemy team with damage, with hardly any CC needed on the enemy team. Defensively, both Enhancement Shamans and Arms Warriors offer their team lots of support options. Enhancement Shamans have a well-rounded toolkit of support, with some some of the best off healing from any hybrid DPS in the game. Combined with Grounding Totem and Tremor Totem, they have lots of tools to shut down enemy setups, all while being disruptive with their ranged interrupt. This comp is both strong and the easiest setup in the game for enhancement shamans and warriors. A wise wizard once said, those who can't play mages play hunter, those who can't play hunter play jungle cleave. And with that, we have the easiest comp for both hunters and feral druids with hunter slash feral slash priest. Ironically, this comp functions similar to rogue mage. Look for win conditions based on long CC setups on healers. The strength and ease of play on Jungle Cleave comes in the form of this control. It has a very streamlined strategy of stunning one or more targets, trapping the healer off the stun, and following that up with a Psychic Scream or Cyclone. Its defensive options are a bit mixed. Feral Druids have surprisingly good off healing, and with a spammable Cyclone, they offer consistent control in between setups. 
If your dream is to one day cosplay as Illidan while also having 5,000 stuns and an arms warrior by your side, look no further than DH slash warrior. This is the easiest comp for demon hunters, and even if it sounds bold and you remain unconvinced, let's consider its win condition. This comp works well with both Resto Druid and Holy Paladin and relies on chaining stuns on multiple targets during its kill setups. From the demon hunter, Chaos Nova and Fell Eruption can be used to lock down kill targets, while Imprison and the Warrior Storm Bolt can be used on off targets as cross CC. Following this, Sharpened Blade can be used to continue pressure on kill targets, watching as they eventually fall low enough for the hunt. The Arms Warrior also helps cover a lot of the fragility of Demon Hunters, once again having Intervene, War Banner, and Rallying Cry to support their team. All in all, this combination of multiple stuns with the raw damage of Demon Hunter and the Mortal Strike from Warrior makes this comp the easiest option for Demon Hunter players. I know what you're thinking right now, wow, that's a lot of melee cleaves, but don't worry, we got some wizards on the way. But before we cover those comps, I wanted to tell you about our huge library of videos over at skillcap.com slash wow. There you will find courses for every class starting with the basics and going all the way to the advanced strategies used by the best players in the world. Our guides include gameplay analysis from rank 1 gladiators and blizzcon competitors. These videos offer a unique learning experience that you won't find anywhere else. If you're looking to start a new class or just want to master your own, check out skillcap.com slash wow. Now let's look at some wizards. First up we have Elemental Shaman Fire Mage, which is the easiest comp for Elemental shamans and holy priests. Just like the melee cleaves we mentioned, this team just has a lot of raw throughput and burst. Both fire mages and elemental shamans can deal huge damage when left unchecked, and their burst cooldowns are always threatening for the enemy team. With lots of instant cast damage from the elemental shaman in the form of echoing shock and stormkeeper, the shaman can pressure opponents by themselves, even when the mage is getting trained. And if the mage is left alone, they can easily land control on enemy healers along with hexes and lightning lasso on DPS, all while threatening their biggest win condition with combustion, which is even scarier when combined with Sky Fury Totem. With a mage on the team, there are a lot of control options, both with slows and snares, and with spammable CC. The Shaman also offers team support in the form of control, off healing, and with grounding and tremor totem to deny enemy setups. A long time ago, in an Azeroth far, far away, mages used to play an ancient spec called Frost. Then, just like our ancient ancestors, they discovered fire, and the game has never been the same. Named originally after a Frost Mage mechanic, Shatter Play comes in as the easiest comp for Shadow Priests, Mages, and Holy Paladins. No matter what spec of Mage you're playing, the comp plays relatively the same. Its primary strength is the amount of CC options it has for all three people on the enemy team. Even without polymorphs on the enemy healer, this team has enough instant CC to quickly kill enemy players, and with strong cooldowns like Combustion, there are a lot of kill options for this comp. Defensively, the Mage offers support for their team with spammable CC, while the Holy Paladin offers lots of defensive coverage with their enormous amount of cooldowns. The additional option of dispelling crowd control with mass dispel allows the holy paladin to play more aggressive making it easier to set up kills with patch 9.0.5 just around the corner there is one class we have yet to mention warlock even though this class is underperforming compared to previous expansions it is still relatively strong and a comp like shadow play is its easiest option in 3v3 shadow priests offer offensive support for warlocks having both dispel protection with vampiric touch and instant cc options with silence fear or psychic horror this opens up a pretty standard caster cleave playstyle, with one caster getting trained while the other does most of the pressure on the enemy team. Both Shadow Priests and Warlocks can do amazing damage if left unchecked, and their win condition is usually based on combining damage with their instant CCs. Having the defensive support from a Holy Paladin is almost mandatory for Warlocks, who are relatively fragile outside of their kiting and defensive cooldowns. If there is one thing that is certainly not balanced, it's having two hybrid DPS on your team, and because of this, Elemental Shaman, Balanced Druid, Holy Paladin is the easiest comp for Boomkins. Offensively, this comp has a pretty standard win condition. It has lots of instant cast damage from both the Elemental Shaman and Boomkin, and one of the easiest CC setups with Root Beam. When combined with the kill power during Incarnation, there's a lot of burst potential during CDs. Even outside of cooldowns, both specs are able to do threatening damage, thanks to the baseline damage of Star Surge and abilities like Echoing Shock with insta-cast Lava Bursts. Defensively, with two hybrids on the team, there's obviously good off-healing from this comp, with all three players having 
healing abilities, 3v1 situations are needed to score kills. And when healing isn't enough, spammable CC like Cyclone can deny kills. If you played in previous expansions, you know how difficult it is to play your character against mage slash druid teams. Or maybe you remember how little you actually could play your character against this combo. Coming in as the easiest comp for resto druids is god comp. Resto druids admittedly have been on the back burner so far this expansion. They're somewhere in between a mid and high tier healer, but just get overshadowed by holy paladins in many ways. God comp helps fill a lot of the weaknesses that druids have right now in the meta. This comp has win conditions similar to other control based comps. It has a lot of CC that can chain on enemy healers and can even kill enemy healers if they're in a bad position. This controls the foundation to its defense as well, with spammable polymorphs and cyclones being able to deflect enemy kill attempts until they can land another CC chain on the enemy healer. Finally, it's time for some controversy. Even though some people will convince you that you need multiple PhDs to play RMP, it is actually the easiest comp in the game for rogues. But to avoid getting ganked on our alts by angry rogues hearing this, we will have to admit something. Rogues do not really have many viable comps outside of RMP. Its win condition is a bit more complicated than some of the other comps in this list. It does require cross CC, with stuns being used on multiple targets to ring or polymorph, but the comp pretty much plays itself. Once you get the scripted setups down, it's all about repeating them until the enemy team is out of cooldowns. Defensively, there are a lot of control options from both the rogue and mage to deny kill attempts on the RMP. Having a spammable CC with polymorph on DPS can deflect enemy kill setups and prolong the game long enough to have another offensive push. And there you have it, the best comps for every spec. Not only are these comps strong, but they are played in a way that makes it easier to learn the foundational skills in Arena. If you're looking for a way to get into Arena, or if you're looking to push rating, try playing one of these setups. And once again, if you like this video, be sure to give us a like and let us know in the comments which comp you think is easy to play. If you want to stay updated on future videos, make sure to subscribe and turn all notifications on. That way you will be notified when we release a video. See you soon!